Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I wanna show you the note repeat function in Logic Pro. I think this is probably a lesser known function in Logic. It's probably criminally underused, but it's a really cool feature that allows you to repeat notes in your performance. So this isn't a plugin that you add to a track. It's sort of a MIDI processing that comes before the software instrument track. So you're not gonna be able to apply this to something that's on a track. You actually have to perform it in in real time, either with a keyboard MIDI controller or a pad style controller like I have here. I'm using the Novation Launchpad Pro, but you could easily use any keyboard style MIDI controller as well. Now you can use this for a lot of things, but in particular, what I find it super helpful for is creating trap style hi-hats on the fly with total tactile control over it. Before I show you how to set any of this up, let me just give you a quick demonstration so you can understand what I'm talking about. Now the thing about using the note repeat function is it doesn't just record my button presses, it actually records each individual note repeat into the piano roll editor. And you'll have to forgive me if that performance was not quite up to par. Anytime I use a video capture software with this running, it actually uh, adds some really, really bad latency to my input. So at the end of the video, I'll do another example where I'm not capturing the screen so you can see it used uh, to its full intent. Okay, so let's talk about how to set this up. I have on a software instrument track, Quick Sampler, and in Quick Sampler, I've just loaded in a hi-hat, and I've changed the root note of the hi-hat to C1. This is just a sample that I found on Splice, I just drag and dropped it in, but this could easily be Drum Machine Designer, it could easily be a third-party instrument as well. The reason why I set the root key to C1 is to make sure that the pitch, the starting pitch of the hi-hat is close to the key triggers for the note repeat. So on my MIDI controller right here is C1. And then all of these notes here, are kind of like the white keys, like two octaves of white keys on the piano, C to C. So this is C negative one, C zero. Then this would be C zero again, and then C one. And so all of these notes are gonna trigger uh, the note repeat. And I'm just holding down C1 to, tr to play the hi-hat sample. Now to find the note repeat function, you simply click here. This shows an additional toolbar. And then you click here to bring up the note repeat function. Now some of this is a bit confusing. And by, by the way, at first it'll probably look like this. So you can click here to show some additional features. And you can also turn on the key remote function, which I'm using here. However, you can also use this with the modulation wheel and make the modulation wheel trigger uh, your note repeat changes. There are some settings for velocity and gain, but I'm not really gonna talk about those in this video. The main thing I wanna talk about is using this key remote feature. So remember what I said on my MIDI controller, this is C negative one. So if I press C negative one, you'll see the rate changes to a quarter note. Well, why is that? Well, down here in the key remote, you can see quarter note is C negative one. Eighth note is going to be D negative one. And then if I just go up the scale, I have 16th note, 32nd note, 64th note, 128th note, 256th note. Now when you get up into the next octave on C0, this is a quarter note triplet, then eighth notes, uh, eighth note triplets, 16th note triplets, uh, 32nd note triplets, 64th note triplets, and so forth and so on. So most of the time I'm kind of riding right in this area between quarter notes and 32nd notes, so these four. And then for triplets, I'm riding around between quarter note and 32nd note triplets. So most of the values I'm using are just these first eight pads here. But again, if you're using a keyboard controller, you'd just be playing those notes on the keyboard. You might have to press your octave key a couple times to drop down into a low enough range to reach these uh, note repeat triggers. So what I can do is just hold C1 to play the sample. 
And um, let me just set this to quarter note. So that's a quarter note at 85. Eighth notes. Sixteenths. Thirty seconds. Quarter note triplets. Eighth note triplets. Sixteenth note triplets. And thirty second note triplets. And there are faster values than that, but they get so wild and, and fast that I, I generally don't like to use them. One other thing here that's a little odd to me is there's a note. There are some other black key uh, functions that you can trigger here. Like if you use the black keys, you can um, do dotted values. I'm choosing to skip the dotted values uh, because the way I have my MIDI controller set up is just for C major, just for white keys. And at the top, there are some other options here. I think there's a swing options. And then um, there's an option for note repeat here. And this one's a little tricky because when you click on this, the activation light lights up, but that actually turns off note repeat. Like I have to continually press the note in order to get that note to repeat. If you turn this off, it actually turns on the note repeat function. So I find that a little weird, but it is what it is. So all I'm doing is I'm hitting record, holding the hi-hat note, and as long as note repeat is up, it's in and it's processing the, the MIDI information on input and translating that over into the MIDI recording. So if I just press R to record, I can record in whatever sequence or pattern I want. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go off screen for a bit, create a new pattern. I'll record myself on my camera uh, doing this, and then I'll match up the screen recording separately so I don't have to deal with that latency issue. Now you might be thinking, what about pitch variation? Because a, a very common thing to do, a stylistic thing to do with trap hi-hats is to pitch them up and pitch them down over time. They don't usually just stay on the same note. One way to do it is you could just pitch these notes up or down. If you're using uh, an instrument where the sample can be pitched up or down that way, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is actually to automate the fine or coarse tuning within quick sampler or whatever third party instrument you might be using. This is my preferred method because I really like the fine tuning changes here, just plus or minus 50 cents. I find that coarse tuning is just, it's a bit too harsh. It's a bit too on the nose. So I like to kind of use the, um, the, the fine tuning here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I can see all of my notes in the piano roll just so I can see what's coming up and then on the hi-hat track, I'll just press A to show my automation. Change the automation mode to touch. I'm using touch because when I pull up the fine parameter or pull it down and I let go of my mouse, this will automatically jump back to the default value of zero. You can use it that way if you like, or if you prefer that it doesn't return to zero, you can use latch instead. So all I'll do now is just press play and move around my uh, fine tuning knob here. And then when you're all done writing in that automation, change this back to read, and you'll see that your software instrument, or in my case, quick sampler, will follow that automation that I've drawn in.
And there you go. That's how you can create trap hats using the note repeat function in Logic Pro. Um, after using this for a little while, I truly believe this is the best way to create trap hats in Logic. It's the most creative and it allows you to get ideas out really, really quickly as opposed to having to go through with maybe the brush tool or maybe doing it in the step sequencer. And I know I've demonstrated both of those techniques in other videos, but I'm really hooked on, on doing things this way. And if you don't like pressing notes on the MIDI controller like I did, just try the modulation wheel function instead. And this will allow you to use the modulation wheel to switch between your different rhythmic subdivisions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.